What is going on everybody? Welcome back to RC Car Garage and today we got ourselves a new box. In this box, we have got the SCX-10 3 early Ford Bronco in the white. Let's open this guy up. So we got ourselves the SCX-10 3 early Ford Bronco. And this guy right here, I want to blame Joe from XOKH RC for making me get this. Um, I always want, actually I always wanted to get the 10 3, but it was a little out of my price range and when Horizon Hobby was having that sale, that huge major sale, I had to get one. And all thanks to Joe from XOKs RC for constantly, constantly, at least every day I think, was posting up how uh, Horizon Hobby was having a sale on these things. So I picked one up for $2.99, had to pick it up. So let's get this guy out of the box and see exactly what this guy looks like. And you guys, as I am flipping this box around to open it up, I have to show you this. Bam! That just looks absolutely beautiful. Axial does a, here we go. I gotta, kinda gotta hold it. So Axial does a great job with the box itself. So much detail. It just shows you everything the way that they, uh, they picture everything. They do a heck of a job with detailing everything that comes standard on the vehicle, pictured on the box. And I really appreciate that they do that. All right, you guys. So here it is, the early Ford Bronco. I decided to get it in the white. I have a thing for white. Don't know what it is. I just have a thing for white cars. Let's uh, let's take this off and whew, that, just, that just feels so good ripping that off. It's always nice when you get a new car <laughs> or truck in this kit or truck in this occasion. So let me move this guy over to the side for a little bit. We'll talk about it in a second. So in the box we have got this packaging right here, which brings a T-wrench. We got the receiver box. We have got some more parts here. Toe strap, it looks like. It's a spring. Is that a toe strap? And uh, I guess it's a fairly cover that are right there. That that says axial on it. A couple screws. Okay. And in good old axial fashion, batteries for your Spectrum DX3. Now in this bag, let's see what else we got. You guys can probably already see it from there. All right, so in this goodie bag, we have got some body posts, some clips, free cool brand swag. Thank you, Horizon. Put that to the side, right there, and we get our basically instruction manual for this guy that tells you what to do, what not to do, um, how to operate everything. This ends up telling you how to work with everything with the Spectrum DX3, 
we'll set that in the drawer. And of course, again, like good old fashioned Axial, we got a whole bunch of stickers. All right, you guys, so this thing's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So the detail on this thing, Axial did a heck of a job. Very, very nicely. I like how they have the doors on there, the interior. I'll show you guys. So I like how they have the full blown interior in this thing, guys. You see the clutch pedal, the brake pedal, and the gas pedal. You have your gauges right there, steering wheel, manual shifter, your four wheel drive shifter, transfer case and all that. Good mamma jamma right here. You have very nicely detailed interior in this thing. We do have a door. There is a body clip right there. So pull the body clip and the door opens. Good nice swing on there. You can probably take this door off and like the Jeep guys, just drive it around without this door. It is held on with this screw there and that right there. So let's put this clip back into place. I do like, this is all hard plastic right up here. Look at this thing. Nice oil filled shocks. They seem to be really good. These are nice. That's cool, the way that they did that with the old school look of the wheel. Are these plastic? Yeah, these are plastic. Let's flip this guy around this way. Now the back end here, I have seen people, I have seen people with the back end here put like a, um, kind of like a rear gate on this. This is a full size usable tire. So if you ever get a flat on the trails, you have a spare tire in the back here. Again, another door here. You have your air scoop in the front. Your headlights, turn signals, and your scoop up here. They, uh, one of the wipers is kind of off a little bit. I can end up fixing that just by with the screw there. And the underside of this thing, guys, looks absolutely awesome. Check out that motor. I love the fact that right from under here, you can see that. Love it. Um, you can see that there is a metal servo horn, metal links, the hub, hub. <laughs> the diff is offset right here, which is beautiful. That just makes the whole front end of this thing look absolutely nice. Check that out. This front bumper, I don't know if that'll end up hanging up on some things or not, but um, it looks like it fits the body very, very well. Uh, right underneath, bring it back up again, right underneath there and on the side right here, you do have body clips. Same with on the back, one there, another one right there. And this thing just looks absolutely beautiful. Um, I do like how they have, here, let's turn this thing on its side. So I do like how they have the wheel wells just kind of match up with the bottom here so it can all look like one whole piece going all along the back. So everything in there is closed up, which is a nice feature for that. Uh, right in there, it looks like there's some holes that you can have some uh, lights right in there. You got another one in the front there and also in the back on the other side. Metal links all around. These seem like they're metal too. So, metal links. Nope, those are plastic. But by the looks of it, if you really look at it, if you're looking at these things in person, they kind of do look like they're metal. But nope, they're plastic. So, let's go ahead and get this body off. All right, and as you go to take the 
body off of this guy, you will see that you have these wires connected and they are for the rear and the front headlights. So be careful when you go to pull the body off, which I already knew about, but so we have attention. So we have an attention thingy. Disconnect battery when vehicle is not in use. Yep, you should always do that. All right, guys, we have our 5.0 engine cover, which looks very nice. I think I'm gonna do something with this. I'm probably going to end up painting, doing some painting here, here in the front. Uh, it would be nice if the hood would pop open, but that looks really nice in there. You do have your wiring here and everything, your IC3 connector for your battery. All right, everybody, so here we have our Spectrum Firma Smart ESC and receiver all in one, and your on-off switch is right there. I wonder how much of a pain that's gonna be to get to when the body is on. I probably should have checked that. But here you have your servo for your dig, which is cool. The If you ever go to take these wheel wells off, you will definitely know how to put them back on. They are marked. Right left, right rear, front right, front left. Now you do have two positions that you can set the battery. You can set your battery here in the middle or you can set your other battery here. You could probably use this for a, I don't know, a winch here in the front, your winch. <laughs> so that is nice that they give you that option. So that is nice that they give you that option. Here is the infamous two-speed transmission that only has the dig connected to it. Um, I'm going to try out the dig function and see how well this thing works out. I think what I might wind up doing is connecting a rod here for the two-speed and lose the dig or I get a, I don't want to get another controller but get another power source of power that I can probably get another servo connected here and uh, oh so that's what that is that is an extra servo horn that you get if you decide you also want to run the two-speed in this guy good nice nice thinking very very nice thinking there uh, axial now the one thing that I really like about this is the fact that this guy comes off just like so. That is awesome. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome how Axial ended up doing that. Of course you got your wheel nut in there. You got your wheel nut in there but just to make the wheels look, give it that classic look. I don't even remember if the original just to give it that classic look. I don't even remember if the real Broncos had these on there. Not sure, but it looks awesome. I like it. Of course, we have the four oil-filled shocks on this guy, which feel really good. You can hear this guy. All right, you guys, so I am totally excited about this thing. Seriously excited. Um, let's put a battery on this guy, put the body back on top, and check out these lights. All right, you guys, so I got the body back on the chassis. Now, I did find it to be a little difficult putting the body back on the chassis for the fact of the wheel wells. So how the body has these hard, plastic uh, over wheel well 
things. These, how it has these, they're screws that come on from the inside. And I found it a little difficult to get the body over that inside wheel well to get the body on. But after the body got on, no issues whatsoever be able to put that on so the other thing that I do have to mention is the fact that when you go to put your battery in this guy make sure that you turn this thing on before you put the body on because there is no access to the switch once you get the body on this guy which I just came to find out so coming in the second time around this thing was not all that bad to be able to put the body back on top of the chassis like the issue that I was having in the beginning. So I do like how they have the marker lights on. They, there are no turn signals when you go to turn. I like that. I do like that too. You do have your rear tail lights, which this is like a lens that's over top of it, which is nice that it's not just a sticker like how they used to do, which is really <laughs> stickers. When it comes to those type of stickers, I, I don't like it. But the fact that Axial put these lenses over top of it, absolutely great. And this thing, believe it or not, you guys, this thing's got some weight to it. It's It's got some weight. Now, let's talk about the DX3. So, to be honest with you, this is my very first DX3, very first Spectrum controller that I have ever had, and I like it. I like it. Uh, you have all your trim levels here on the sides. You have your bind button here. What does that do? Oh, that's your dig. So I'm guessing that's your dig right here, which is by your thumb. It's pretty cool. So of course you got your you got your brake rate, your start rate, brake rate, steering trim, and throttle trim all on this guy. How about we take this guy outside, give it a little run, and see how it does? Let's go.
All right, you guys, so little crawl that I was doing here. Hope you guys enjoy this little crawl to that uh, I found here at this uh, little, nice little crawling spot that I, uh, nice little crawling spot that I found here. So one of the flaws that I had found already with the SCX-10 3, I was doing good until this part right here where it, I can't find out that you guys see right there my dry shaft popped off. Um, it was doing good until the dry shaft popped off. I'm gonna try to fix it and see if, uh, go ahead and keep running on this thing a little bit more. So stay tuned. So we are back in action.
Alright everybody, so there we have it. Uh, I think this thing did pretty well out on that creek. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm very happy about it. Um, I mean, there was a little issue that I was having as I was on that creek. I noticed that my front wheels weren't spinning and um, it was just rear wheels. I mean, I was still getting over stuff, but the front wheels were not spinning so I'm like what is going on and then I remembered a couple videos that I've seen where the front drive shaft ended up coming apart which was an easy fix luckily it was an easy fix so what had happened here I'll, I'll just bring you guys over so what actually happened was this part right here of the drive shaft this right here was all the way up there like literally all the way up there so that little bit of the spline was attached to the front part of the drive shaft what i wound up doing after i reconnected the drive shaft back in that part of the spline there i just was able to now i can't do it there we go so I was able to move it right there in the center and I was able to finish up that run on the creek. The rear is about the same exact thing. So I'll just, there, there you go. So when you get these things, if you haven't gotten one of these yet, when you get these, that's one thing that you guys have to watch out for is the drive shaft right here. And the back one, I didn't have any issues with the back one, but just make sure that that front part of the drive shaft right there is pretty much in the center. You will not have any issues with that. But all in all, I think this thing did very, very well. Uh, I had it bound up a couple times, but I believe it did very well. And of course, we all know it has the metal pan hard connection right here. And I bought this IC3 connector just so I could have it and make my own connections for the batteries. So I do not have any smart batteries, but I just ended up making a connection here so I could connect to the rig. So all in all guys, I am extremely happy with this thing. Other than having that little, other than having that little issue with the front drive shaft, this thing I believe did very well. The tires, a lot of people were saying, eh, the tires could use some work. But I think the tires did very well in the wet and in the dry. So with that being said, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little creek run. Because that was the first time you running this thing out on that creek. And again, it did very well. So guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. 
and I will see you guys in another video. You all have a good one. Keep our seeing.